You're a high school, college, or university music student that struggles with practice. Are you stuck in a rut or frustrated that you're not making any progress? In an eternal plateau. Feel like you're not getting any better? Well, this video is for you. All jokes aside, like those sorts of feelings were very normal for me when I was a music student. Since graduating, I've spent a lot of time reflecting on healthy practice and good practice habits. And so today I wanted to share with you five practice tips that I wish I knew when I was a music student. All right, we're jumping in with tip number one, and that is don't fixate on the big picture. Now, it's really normal as musicians for us to kind of have our sights set on things that we want to do or things that we want to be. I feel like we all have our heroes um, and players that we want to kind of emulate and want to sound like. The tough thing is it's, it's like learning a language. It's really such a long-term pursuit. It's a lifelong pursuit, really. It can be kind of daunting when we see the mountain that it is that we have to scale and just how much work it takes. When I was a student, I really used to struggle with this because... I used to hear amazing musicians. I used to think, oh, I just want to sound like them. I got to put in the work. And I'd go through these intense bursts of high volume of practice, just practicing like lots of hours every day, going, yep, I'm going to get there. I'm going to do this. And then I'd also go through these like prolonged periods of absolutely hating it and feeling like I wasn't getting anywhere and being frustrated and tired. And that would be very unmotivating. I would end up not practicing much at all. And I feel like I was just going between these two extremes. And it's because my mind was so set on what it is that I wanted to be, rather than just keeping my focus on the practice that I had to do and keeping it really simple. And here's, here's what I'm really trying to say. Healthy practice is all about simple habits and doing them every day. I want you to think about practice just like brushing your teeth or having a shower. You know, it's something that we do every day without questioning. Um, there's no like internal conflict of like, oh, I have to do this practice because I have to be something. It's like, oh, I'm not going to get to where I want to be unless I do this practice. And it's like this struggle, this internal struggle. And you have to conjure the intrinsic motivation from Don't within yourself Don't let your dreams day. be dreams. What I've discovered works really well is just to separate that emotion from it. One really helpful analogy that I heard is that we want to make it part of our identity as musicians. So think of a runner. For someone to call themselves a runner, they have to run regularly, right? And if they didn't run regularly, they just by definition wouldn't be a runner. And I think it's the same for us as musicians, you know? We have to accept that as musicians, part of our identity is practicing every day. It's just what we do, you know? As soon as we separate the emotion from it and we start looking less at the big picture and more at process, which is our daily practice, that is gonna make the world of difference. It's gonna be a much healthier approach to practice. And you'll find that without the fluctuations of intensity and highs and lows, you'll get a lot more practice hours in and you'll find it more enjoyable. For me now practice is, it's like daily personal time, you know, it's like personal development and I feel, I feel great when I practice, you know, my relationship with it has changed drastically since graduating from university. And it's something that I love doing now. I would encourage all of you guys to get that sort of relationship with your instruments and to spend time with it that's healthy. And that starts with thinking a bit less about the big picture and just falling in love with the process. All right, guys, so tip number two. And you're going to hate me for this one because I'm sure you've all heard it many times, but it is to play everything slowly. And this kind of pairs with doing more repetitions than you think. So I'm going to, I'm going to bracket those two together. Play it slowly. Do it more times than you think you need to do it. Now, the reason I say these things is it's all about building muscle memory of skills that require conscious effort, and then we're basically shifting those to being able to do those subconsciously. In order to achieve that, we need to play things slower than you think. This is something that I glossed over for a long time because I was like, yeah, I get it. My teachers are telling me to play stuff slow, but... I'm starting to realize now how many slow repetitions it takes for something really to stick. I really like giving the analogy of a tightrope walker. Now you have to think about what the consequence of being a tightrope walker is, right? If you fail to walk the tightrope on a gig, you die. 
And it's as simple as that. So you can imagine the way that a tightrope walker practices at home. They don't just kind of walk along once and go, yep, done. That's in the can-do basket, ready for the gig. No, you can imagine a tightrope walker is walking it, turn around, walk it again, turn around, walk it again, turn it. Because what they're essentially doing is trying to get their skill to the point that they know with 100% certainty that they're never, ever going to fail it. I see too often in my students and myself as well, this is, this is a natural instinct for all of us as humans, is we play it correctly and we go, cool, we can do that and we leave it and we come back another day or in a week's time or a month's time, we come back to it and it's like, oh, I thought I could do that. And it takes you two or three or four attempts to get it right again. We really want to be able to... You'll need to turn off airplane mode. To do that, we have to... Siri just broke my train. We want to be able to play things to the point where we know we can't get them wrong. So in short, practice like a tightrope walker. Play everything slow and do it more times than you think is necessary. Okay, tip number three for you guys is also going to go in the category of things I was told when I was a student but I didn't take seriously. And that is to record yourself. And it's super important. I can't stress this enough. Record your practice record your gigs, and spend time listening back to them and reflecting on it. I didn't quite realize the importance of this until the third year of my undergrad when I did a practice research paper. I basically had to research over a five-week period. I was investigating some practice techniques and their effectiveness in working on new improvisation language. I also recorded every practice session. I recorded every rehearsal and I recorded every gig and I spent time listening to it and reflecting on it and I had a written journal. And this process of recording and reflecting is one of the most important things that we need to do in our practice. The reflective process is almost like a compass or like having a map. It really narrows in our focus of what it is that we need to work on because what happens is when we're playing in the moment, we don't have the most objective view of what we sound like. You might think you know what you sound like, but I'm sure you've had this experience where you listen back to yourself either playing your instrument or even talking and you go, that can't be what I sound like. I'm sure everyone's experienced that because it's what it's like. Everyone's perception of what they sound like in the moment is different to what they sound like to others and to themselves listening back. So we need to be recording ourselves and spending that time reflecting because it'll give us direction and point out to us details that we miss in the moment. It's super important. I, it's something that I do now. And I'm very thankful that I just finally discovered the importance of this. So record yourself. All right, guys. So tip number four is focus on what you can't do. Now, this is a bit of a painful one to do because essentially what we're doing is we are looking at our insecurities directly in the eyes and admitting to our flaws basically yeah it can be painful it can hurt to admit to the things that we can't do but as soon as we start doing that we open ourselves up for more rapid growth when we're practicing things that we can do it feels really good it's positive reinforcement and you leave the practice room feeling happy and you're like yep i can do all these things but the point of practice is to get better which means that we need to be acknowledging the things that we can't do and then working at them. I'll readily admit that there's so many flaws in my playing, there's so much that I'm working on, but I'm happy to publicly admit that um, in order to keep working on them and show that it's a, it's a lifelong pursuit. I, I've now kind of reframed the way that I feel at the end of practice now, because if I leave feeling good, it means that I've probably been working on stuff that I can already do and I kind of go, oh, was that really effective practice? Whereas on the other hand, if I leave a little bit mentally fatigued, I know that it, at the very least, I'm working on things that I should be working on. I would encourage you to kind of flip your thinking about that, that if you're feeling too good <laughs> when you leave practice consistently, then you're probably not quite working on the things that you need to work on. So, yeah, keep that in mind, guys. Focus on the things that you can't do.
Okay, so that brings us nicely to point number five, which is to be kind to yourself. Now, I know this is a really important one for me personally, and it's one that takes constant reminding, and I think it's really important for all of us just to reflect on why we play music and the great things about it we get to share in, in something that's so unique and awesome, and I'm grateful for it every day. I think these feelings of gratefulness are important because it's really easy to get into negative and dark headspaces sometimes as musicians, and I think we can all relate to these feelings in some some kind of way. And those feelings can really start to influence our practice negatively. So what it is that we're really trying to do in our practice is to avoid physical tension and to avoid emotional tension, because these things will lead to poor practice and they will eventually cause you to burn out. Now, I think physical tension is pretty self-explanatory. We don't want to be pushing through any kind of physical pain when we're practicing. Just keep it relaxed. You know, if you find yourself getting tense, take five, ten minutes. Don't push through the pain. It's not good. I know so many musicians that have had RSI type problems. Pushing through that pain is something that you will pay for later. Emotional tension kind of relates back to point one that I was talking about. It's not a sustainable way to practice. You'll fluctuate between lots of hours and then none at all, and it's just not healthy at all. And it stems from wanting to be something really badly and wanting to be something that we're not. You don't have to, you know. You go at your own speed, and that's the that's the great thing about what we do. You know, we're all on, on our own journey and discovering the beautiful things about music, you know, at our own speed. Okay, guys, those have been my five practice tips that I wish I knew when I was a music student, or at the very least, I wish I took seriously when I was a music student. It's most likely just been me rambling for the last 10 minutes of your time, but yeah, I hope I hope it's been valuable to at least someone. If at least one person found this useful, then it will have all have been worth it for me. So thanks for checking it out, and let me know what you think of this kind of content. If you want me to ramble about any other things about being a music student, I'm more than happy to do that. Let me know. Um, but yeah, thanks again for sticking around and I'll catch you next time.